Hello everyone, it's Sheila back again. Welcome to my channel. It's a bit of my time now. I'm knitting my own. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit further on with this. I haven't done much the last few days, one thing and another. But it is Good Friday today and I don't have to go anywhere today. That's why I haven't bothered any about my hair, anything like that. I've just left it <laughs> the way it was after I got up and combed it. Because it does, having your hair tied up all the time does give you a headache sometimes. <laughs> so I like it sometimes when I don't have to go anywhere, don't have to do anything but just stay in my house and do what I want to do. And that's what I'm doing now. What I want to do is I not have to bother about my granddaughter or anything like that because they are away camping for the the holiday weekend. I'm quite happy sitting here doing my own thing, what I want to. But in the meantime, I'll put that down for a minute. Now I have finished. This is the little a little cardigan I was doing. This one's going to um, Dagri. Now this one, it's supposed to be 22 inch, but you know it measures 24. But I think I could have done this on um, 3.75 needles instead of the, um, the 4 millimeter needles because it seems to have come out bigger. But at least what I was complaining about, about the um, the bottom, the welt, you know, having to add extra stitches on. It does look all right, but it doesn't pull in like it does normally on the bottom of a, um, a sweater or a, um, a cardigan. And I still think it's rather slack. So if I do any more, I'm going to do like what I did on the sleeves. As you can see, the way the sleeves in the sleeves is a bit narrower down where the rib is, it starts to go out from the rib. So I think I'm going to do that on the um, the bottom of any more of these I do because of the I do not like having to add all those extra stitches on the the back and the um, the sides. I think it make it too makes it slack. But anyway, it's all finished. And when I finish the top that I'm doing for Dagri, which I'm nearly nearly finished, I'll be sending it um, off. Else asking about this, anything knitted with this wool will have to realise it will cost them more because of the price of the, um, the wool. To give you an example, this cardigan here, it took two balls. That's what I had left of the um, the second ball. This is a 20, 22 to 24, I think I'll check the size. 20 to 22, but it has come out more like a 24 inch actually. And that was how much wool I had left out of it. And that wool costs £3.99 pence a ball. So if anybody wants anything that didn't this, they're all going to have to pay extra because I'll give you a breakdown of the um the price. It's well, so just say two, say three, four pound a ball. It's easier to work it out like that. So there's eight pound of wool in it. And you can add, if you want to see the, um I buy the buttons in um, bulk, but if you were buying them separate, it would be about a pound for um six buttons. Buttons are quite expensive when you buy just one or two um, these days. So that's eight, that would be nine pound. And the postage now, I think it's three pound. I think I did write it down somewhere, the new, because the postage has gone up. Oh, not that one, but that book. I've got a book somewhere, I write things like that in. I think I wrote down the price of the, um, the postage I was going, going up to. Yes, it would be a small parcel and it would cost £3.35 for the postage. That's going um, second class. 
if anybody wanted first class it would be £4.45 which is quite a bit actually it was £3.85 for first class before and it's gone up to £4.45 so that's 60 pence extra but the um, the second class has gone up from 3 20 to £3.35 so you would have to add £3.35 onto the £9 that would be £12.9 twelve pound thirty five pence and then I want something for knitting it up which I would say at least three pound a ball that's another six pound so that's eighteen that's nearly nineteen pound so I would probably charge anyone any of these that I'm knitting I would probably charge them about twenty pound just for the um the cardigan so that's for anyone that has any intentions of asking me to knit any of these that's how much it's going to cost you at least 20 pound maybe it's a bit a little bit less if it's a very small baby one because um it won't take quite as much um wool but that's it anyway i thought i'd get that out of the way in case anybody was thinking about asking for any because they might think they're going to get some like i might sell some for little cardigans and things for 10 and 12 pound but it's a lot cheaper the wool is a lot cheaper and actually the postage was a bit cheaper then as well but anyway i was at my bingo last night and i do have an order for a um a crochet like i think you call a mandala those things you put on the table for putting like a um a fruit bowl or a flower vase or something on so i thought so I was going to my bingo, we do have a, um, a break, I pick my friend up about 7 o'clock and we get to the place we're going to about quarter past 7 and the bingo doesn't start till about quarter past 8 so I have nearly an hour, well maybe it's about three quarters of an hour by the time we buy all our tickets and everything else um, that we need so I have about three quarters of an hour and then we have a break for about half an hour between um, one lot of games and another so I thought to myself I'm going to take some um, wool with me. I can start crocheting this um, mandala thing while uh, I'm there. So that's what I did. And that's how much I got done. So it's not bad for considering there was a lot of talking going on. And while I was trying to do this, it's, it's a bit close. It's just like my the little flower one I do. Only I'm going to do it bigger. Keep on going round. I have to find out the exact diameter that um, the lady wants for this before before I actually finish it. So I had a lot of conversation while I was doing it. My friend sitting next to me, she can crochet but she doesn't do that much and she was having a look every time I put a bit down to, to cut off the wool for another berry. She just picked it up and having a look and then the girl on the other side, Sharon her name is, how do you do that? How do you get to do a circle? How do you get it flat like that, Sheila? <laughs> Easy. She says, but when I do mine, she says, flat, they come up like that. I says, well, you mustn't be increasing on the on, when you're going on the round. You have to increase the number of stitches, you know, that you go around there. Oh, it shows how you do it. How did you start it off? I says, I started off with the magic loop. I says, but I've already started it. I says, I'm not going to pull it out and show you. Oh, you've got some more bits. You've got some more bits of wool there. Have a look. So I had to show how to do a magic circle, and you know the brain just didn't take it in. <laughs> I managed managed to get to get to show how to um, to do it, and then she's doing. But what do I do after that row? After I get the magic circle done, I says, well, you have to crochet all around it. I says, and then you make whatever stitch you're going to do after that onto those stitches that you've crocheted around the circle. And I haven't got my watch on at the moment. Oh, it's here. I'm busy charging it. I'm busy charging it up. My watch. I had that one at the um, the time. And the um, the lady that was asking me, uh, Sharon, about the um, how to do the crochet and all that. Well, she brings her dad to the bingo as well. And her dad's in his 80s. And he was sitting talking to him and he said, you know, I've been for a checkup today, he says, and my heart rate is great. It's right down to 44, he says, but mind I do take some medication for it. 
and I just out of curiosity I looked at my watch thing it's got the um the heart rate on when you you click on it I find the heart rate it shows you your heart rate and all that um on it and I, I stick it on mine it's actually on 100 it's going to went up to 114 today I don't know why but I showed, showed him mine, he's looking, it was on 95, and he says, your heart rate's high, isn't it? I says, it's got a good rate to be high. I says, I've had these pecking in me, co in me ear on this side, and this one on that side, how to do the crochet and all that, and I says, and this, that, and the other. I says, no wonder my heart rate's high. I says, when the bingo starts, it'll go back down again. But it didn't, you know, the last house we were playing, um, I had... All my numbers marked off except one number and they must have called out about 25 numbers before somebody actually shouted house and I was still waiting for that one number. So I said to, to my friend Sharon to her, um, her father Ken, his father's called, her father's called Ken. I said to Ken, I said, now you see why my heart rate's high. <laughs> That's what happens in, uh, when you're, you're playing the bingo and that and you're waiting for a number like that. I was waiting for a number quite a few times and I said, my heart rate is high, I says, because everybody else in this group is winning but us. I think um, my friend Sharon won. There was another lady called Pauline won. Um, Trish won. Um, Julie won. There was 12 of us there all together and all of those were winning. And me and my friend, well, my friends, she won once, just one little line, I think it was, when I wasn't there, one week I wasn't there. But I never won anything for ages, and all of those in our group keep winning every week. But we never win anything. So oh, see, now I know why my heart rate's up, don't you? But anyway, I'm sitting doing a bit more of my knitting. At least I know today, being Good Friday, there'll be no postman coming, so I won't be having any more parcels coming today. <laughs> it's very... Nice getting parcels, but sometimes it stops me from doing what I'm doing with my knitting. I kind of get on with it for opening all these parcels, but never mind. I'll be back to normal on Saturday tomorrow, and I won't be at my granddaughter's on Sunday for my um, dinner because they are, they'll still be camping away unless the weather gets really bad and they decide to come home. And of course, if there's Five of them with three little kids, two adults and three little kids stuck in a tent. If the, if the weather turns bad and they can't get out, I think they'll definitely be home. <laughs> Especially with little Eddie. When I go down there, their house, as soon as I show my face in the door, I get dragged into the living room. Out pulls out, um, his mum has one of those container things in the corner with all the boxes in with these toys and that and as soon as I show my face the Thomas the Tank engine box is pulled out and I've got to build all the pieces up for him and <laughs> I see there's not somebody else here that can build it up for you does have to be you got to wait for me coming <laughs> no 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 you build it up <laughs> but never mind I'm doing my knitting now I'm also having a drink here before it gets cold So that's my little bit for today, so thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll catch you all another time, so see you later, bye for now.